People thousands of miles away tried to register concern. Today, the largest demonstrations were in London, where a March, a March and a benefit, benefit concert were staged, among other things, to protest yesterday's decision by the European Common Market not to order new trade sanctions against South Africa. In South Africa, the government says two people were hurt today in the Cape province when a bomb went off at a trash can, and that nine people died in a 24-hour period yesterday. Four of them shot at a roadblock. Even so, some of those are arguing in South Africa that reform, uh, reforms are taking hold. And we have more on that from Alan Pizzi. The South African Parliament adjourned this week in a cloud of bitterness and frustration. Eight major bills removing hundreds of apartheid laws were passed this session. But the state of emergency dominated those reforms. The emergency disregarded South Africa's showpiece of change, the three-house parliament that gives a political voice to Indians and so-called coloreds. Then it bypassed Parliament again and legalized two harsh security laws. That embarrassed Alan Hendrickson, the most prominent figure in the non-white Parliament. That we are trying to count our pluses and our minuses. But Hendrickson believes the reforms are real. Some people have described them as cosmetic. But I personally believe in the domino theory that one thing goes and it affects something else. So-called petty apartheid has gone. Blacks and whites mix in bars, restaurants, and workplaces. Scenes like this pockmark the smooth exterior of the government's reform intentions. Just hours before an apartheid law regulating the presence of blacks in white areas was to be repealed, the authorities used it to order refugees out of a temporary haven in a church garden. I'm very skeptical when government speaks about reform. But international skepticism drives the white government to despair. We are now reaching the height of reform in our history. Nothing, but nothing that we suggest will ever please the outside world. Laws which force those with homes out of city areas show no sign of changing. For many, 38 years of apartheid have removed any feeling that what whites proclaim as reform might be acceptable. It is becoming increasingly clear that South Africa's future depends not just on reform, but on the pace of reform. Alan Pizzi, CBS News, Cape Town. Some fairly unusual developments in Poland today. The Polish Communist Party is getting ready for a national congress, which hasn't happened much lately, and the Soviet leader has decided to come for the first time in a while. But in spite of all that, one thing has not changed. There's still no love lost between the Poles and their Soviet neighbors. Bert Quint reports. Soviet leader Gorbachev arrived in Warsaw tonight for the first Polish Communist Party Congress in five years. Gorbachev's presence here amounts to a vote of confidence for Polish Party Chief Jaruzelski and the steps he has taken to bring Poland back into the Orthodox Socialist fold. In 1981, then-Soviet leader Brezhnev not only refused to come, but threatened to clean up the party and the opposition solidarity movement if the regime here didn't do something about it. Five years later, Jaruzelski can claim he's put Poland's house in order. Last month, police finally arrested Poland's most wanted fugitive, underground solidarity leader Zbigniew Bujak. Other crackdowns have put 300 political prisoners in jail. Clubbings and arrests have broken the back of public protests, where tens of thousands used to demonstrate. Now, even on major anniversaries, like one this week, only a few thousand appear. Even so, the spirit of solidarity lives on and grows in the churches. Every week, dozens of priests denounce socialism from the pulpit, something unthinkable five years ago. Solidarity is wounded, many Poles say, but it is not dead. Very much alive, too, is the special relationship between Jaruzelski and Gorbachev, two practical men who agree that change is necessary, but not at the cost of eroding the power of the party. That relationship, though, is strictly personal. The traditional Polish hatred of the Russians increased after the nuclear accident at Chernobyl. Thanks, Moscow, for the radioactivity. Demonstrators in Warsaw chanted then. Now the current joke is Gorbachev has come on a mission of friendship. He's going to give Kiev to Poland. Bert Quint, CBS News, Warsaw. 
Secretary of State George Shultz is homeward bound tonight after a long trip to Asia, but reporters on his plane say what bothers Shultz is another subject, the lack of progress on holding another U.S.-Soviet summit. Correspondent Bill McLaughlin is traveling with the secretary and filed this report in Hawaii. Schultz told reporters traveling with him that it seemed that the Soviets are now not interested in high-level talks with American officials. Schultz, for example, was supposed to have met twice this year with the Soviet foreign minister, Edward Shevardnadze, to discuss ways to prepare for the next Reagan-Gorbachev summit. But so far, they have not met even once, and that would seem to dim chances for a summit this year. Schultz appears to be very frustrated with Soviet behavior. He says he's willing to meet anywhere, anytime, with Soviet foreign minister Shevardnadze, but all he gets from Moscow is silence. Schultz now says that the ball is in the Soviet court. The U.S. is willing to sit down and discuss ways to solve major problems, like breaking the impasse in arms control talks. But first, the U.S. has to have someone to talk with. Bill McLaughlin, CBS News at Hickam Air Force Base in Honolulu. Later in the broadcast, we'll look at how the president took on Congress on aid to Nicaragua's rebels and won. But next, a report on the death of yet another young athlete. Sacramento, California today, an autopsy turned up no definite cause for the sudden death of Cleveland Brown football star Don Rogers. He collapsed yesterday. Efforts to revive him failed. Officials are not ruling out a drug connection. Nadine Berger has our report. Rogers is standing right there once again. Don Rogers was on top of the world. An outstanding Cleveland Brown free safety, he died yesterday afternoon from cardiac arrest on the eve of his wedding. He was 23 years old. The autopsy did reveal that there is absolutely no trauma to the body, <clears throat> nor is there any evidence of foul play. The report also indicates Rogers' lungs were filled with fluid, but that otherwise he was healthy. Further toxicology reports are necessary to determine if death was drug-related, but already there is medical speculation. I think it's very strongly in favor of a very acute episode, and you would have to say it's drugs until proven otherwise. Rogers had attended a bachelor party in his honor shortly before he lapsed into a coma Friday morning. He had spent his life winning. The six foot, 206 pound All-American UCLA safety was the Browns' first draft choice in 1984. The same year he was named the AFC Conference Rookie of the Year. Today he was to marry his college sweetheart. Friends and family ready to attend his wedding were shocked. He was clean cut. He was. Uh sort of the wholesome type of kid. So I had a very difficult time uh, accepting the fact that it was drugs. The coroner's office says the final autopsy report on Don Rogers will be available Monday. Nadine Berger, CBS News, Sacramento. And late today, the pathologist who conducted the autopsy on Rogers said since there is no evidence he uh, died from disease or injury, the leading consideration is a probable drug overdose. So many millions of people suffer from migraine headaches that there is a medical conference on the subject today in Chicago. And one of the hottest topics of the convention is that the latest theory on migraines, and no pun intended, may be all in the mind. Gary Reeves has our report. It's Noretta cold. Baker's headaches are so painful, they put her in the hospital. The nose aches and the bones in your face, the eyeballs feel like they're protruding. Pat Olivito says headaches cost her her job because she says her boss didn't understand the pain and neither did her doctors. 
They make you take the little neurology test and then they hand you some pills and say bye. Pat and Noretta are among more than 16 million Americans who suffer from chronic migraine headaches. This weekend, headache specialists from all over the nation are meeting in Chicago to share what they know about migraine. What they know is they can teach patients to use their minds to control their pain. It's a process called biofeedback. And it just uh, works like a miracle. Dr. Seymour Diamond has established an entire hospital ward devoted to headache sufferers. While he still uses traditional drug therapy, he says biofeedback has allowed him to help more patients control their headache pain. Migraine headaches start when blood vessels in the brain swell, causing the muscles around them to tighten. That's what causes the excruciating pain. Biofeedback teaches the patient to reduce the flow of blood to the brain and to relax the muscles, thereby reducing the pain. The machines are fancy and flashy, but all they do is tell the patient if she's successful. She concentrates on making her hands feel warm. A higher hand temperature means less blood flow and less pressure in her head. Eventually, she can do it without the machines. It makes me feel confident that I'm being able to control this. And for Pat Alavito, it's been a revelation. I use that every night. It puts me, I help myself relax to go to sleep. And while biofeedback won't cure everyone's headache, it is helping. The number of technicians certified to use it has grown from 500 to 5,000 in the last five years. And some experts say we've only seen the beginning of the mind's ability to control the body's pain. Gary Reeves, CBS News, Chicago. To plan a busy business, you need the IBM Personal Computer XT, today's most popular business PC. When you're very busy, you can add software from a library of powerful business programs to keep track of inventory, sales, and profits. When business gets extremely busy, your XT can store up to 10,000 pages of information. The IBM PC XT. The bigger you get, the better it gets. See it at your authorized dealer. Presenting Marigord Bowl from Taster's Choice. Superior gourmet coffee beans are roasted long and dark for a strong, smooth cup of coffee. Marigord Bowl. The choice for taste is Taster's Choice. To get rid of old paint and down to bare wood, you can mess around with all kinds of stuff. Or get a Wagner Power Stripper. At 1,100 degrees, no heat gun works faster. Wagner does a better job. Investing by the numbers is a little like painting by the numbers. Everybody else's research produces everybody else's results. And that's less than inspired. That's ordinary. At Fred Alger, we create our own research for our own clients. $10,000 invested with Fred Alger in 1965 would be worth nearly $680,000 today. That's more than inspired. That's genius. A genius for managing money. Fred Alger Management Incorporated. Sandinista officials in Nicaragua vowed today not to sit back and wait while new U.S. aid is funneled to the Contra rebels. One immediate target of the government, the voices of dissent inside Nicaragua. Mike O'Connor has that story. Here, there, the Yankee will die. The chant of a people being told to prepare for an American invasion. Today, a top Sandinista leader said, Congressional approval of Contra aid amounts to a declaration of war by the United States. And now all of Nicaragua's energy must go to defending the revolution. Last night, Nicaraguan President Ortega told a rally, many Nicaraguans who oppose the government are only instruments of U.S. foreign policy. He asked if the government should continue to be tolerant with them. Ortega warned there may be a crackdown on political parties, unions, and Catholic church officials. He said some of these use the cover of politics to cause dissension and help the Contras. What we have here is a war, and in warfare, you fight back with war. The party leader also warned Nicaraguans living overseas might be considered to have abandoned their country at a time of need, and so be barred from coming home. Mike O'Connor, CBS News, Managua. At his California Ranch White House today, more controversy about aid for the Nicaraguan rebels as the president relaxed about 50 Contra aid opponents convoyed up the mountain to speak and chant their minds at the ranch entrance. 
But then some Contra supporters showed up and the two sides had what was described as a spirited exchange of views. For the White House, getting the Congress to approve more aid for the Nicaraguan rebels was a big victory that came after a massive lobbying campaign. And when the president described what might happen in Nicaragua this week if Congress turned down the aid, he did it in the harshest terms. We will have to confront the reality of a Soviet military beachhead inside our defense perimeters about 500 miles from Mexico. The speech was only part of it. Contra leaders and their supporters were roaming the halls of the Capitol and congressmen were being herded to the White House as the administration turned up the pressure on Contra aid. Despite what you might think, pressure from the White House is not the worst thing that can happen to a congressman. And it provides an opportunity when the lobbying takes place for people to be able to say, you want this, Mr. President, I want something too. We can have a little give and take here. And you get it at the highest levels. Elliot Abrams, one of the administration's top strategists, told Deborah Potter it is a good time for a congressman to get the ear of the White House. We went through the congressman, name by name. What issues is this man interested in? What will affect that woman's vote? We just kept at it and at it and at it, and we did that because the president instructed us to. Can just a little attention from the White House really have that much effect? Just ask the top congressional Democrat. One of our fellows who had been voting with us consistently said, I had never spoken to a president face to face before. I was more odd than if I had talked with the, with the Pope as a Roman Catholic. One Republican who went against the president told Mary Martin that in the end, the president just wore them down. Yes, I, I think uh, the president's perseverance has been very impressive here. And the president has proven to be uh, stronger in leadership uh, than uh, the Congress. And the Congress uh, has caved to uh, a very strong president. But it was probably more than that, because whether or not they agree with a president on a volatile issue like Nicaragua, new congressmen learn early on that it is usually safer politically to go along with a president, rather than risk the heat that comes later if the president proves right. What the president did was not wear anybody down, but he said, we are going to keep this issue here, and you're going to have to face it. And the Congress did. The Congress lived up to its responsibility in a very good way and in some cases may also have picked up a plum or two from the White House for the folks back in the home district. We do not expect a press release from either side on that part. Hi, I'm Carlo Rossi. Fifty years of experience have taught me one thing. You can't make fine wines unless you begin with high quality grapes. So a great deal of care goes into growing of these grapes for Carlo Rossi wines. That's why a Chablis has a light crisp taste, perfect with meals or at cocktail time. I like talking about Carlo Rossi Chablis, <laughs> but other than drink it. People work best when they work together. Hello, Yellow Pages, this is Chuck Richard. With US West Direct, Honeywell has found a better way to handle millions of Yellow Pages ads. With a Honeywell computer system to streamline operations, the ads run, the customers call, everything goes smoothly. Honeywell, together we can find the answers. There were more heavy rains today in parts of Mississippi, Arkansas, and Louisiana, the last remnants of what was once Hurricane Bonnie. The storms brought about 10 inches of rain and flooding to Shreveport, Louisiana yesterday, but flood waters receded today. And many residents returned home to find the damage left behind. Some 300 homes were damaged or destroyed in the Shreveport area. North Carolina could use some of the rain. It's been years since it's been so dry there, and they now expect it to get worse. We have a report from James McManus. It's dry as dust in North Carolina, and farmers are selling off cattle six months early, losing money and praying for rain. Farmers are out of grace, and a lot of them are out of water. A dry spring in the southeast is turning toward a parched summer. The wheat harvest is down sharply, 
Slow-growing corn is baking in the fields with rainfall short by almost 14 inches so far, and tobacco farmers are pumping from deep wells to keep North Carolina's big cash crop alive and green. And when the pastures burn brown, the cost of raising cattle goes too high to make economic good sense. Jimmy Moffat is keeping his livestock fattened, but he's using up winter feed and time is running out. Started from scratch and I built it up to the place where I wanted to and I hate to get rid of some of my better cows, but somewhere down the line you got to cut loose on some of them and, and it means get rid of some of the better ones. At first, farmers wait hours to sell now and cut their losses, keeping up their spirits with dry humor. Father told me he, he stopped at the Yadkin River down yonder and seen catfish swimming up ahead, ticks on them. But it's no joke this day with 3,000 head of cattle on the block headed for the supermarket or to buyers looking for an early season bargain in livestock. It can get worse and, and indeed it possibly may. July and August is predicted to be uh, dry and hot, uh, scattered showers. Farmers here say it's got to rain someday, but forecasts see no break in the worst drought in 10 years. James McManus, CBS News, Siler City, North Carolina. Caterpillar Tractor Company and the United Auto Workers Union agreed today on a six-day contract extension after the existing contract ran out. That averted, for now anyway, a possible strike by 17,000 Caterpillar workers in five states. Louisiana, hard hit by falling oil prices, now has the highest unemployment in the country. But there is one exception, the town of Oakdale, where unemployment is actually declining because of a controversial task the town has agreed to undertake. Carlos Aguilar reports. When the paper mill and the plywood factory shut down four years ago, unemployment in Oakdale Town would just close down and die. We knew it was down, we knew we had a problem, and a lot of people were worried about where their job was coming from and where the next dollar was coming from. To replace those lost dollars, Oakdale turned to an industry no one else wanted, a new federal alien detention center. Surprised, very pleased, very... Uh, very happy to become a part of this community, and it's, it's been a very good relationship uh, all along. Yeah. Seventy-five percent of the employees at the center are from the local area, and the $35 million project is not yet finished. My wife works there, i got a brother that works there, several people that I know does, and it's helping things out. I would like to personally get into it, because I think it would be a job that a man would be proud of. Although the majority of the local people are in favor of this detention center, it does have its critics. I'm a supporter of um, greater employment opportunities for the people of Oakdale, but I don't like to see it being done at the expense of the civil rights of uh, detainees. In a word, Oakdale is in the middle of nowhere, and that makes it difficult for aliens seeking political asylum to get legal representation. Local officials say the Oakdale story may be a lesson for other economically depressed areas, that welcoming a neighbor no one else wanted could actually help solve their problems. Carlos Aguilar, CBS News, Oakdale, Louisiana. Immigration officials said today that 21 men believed to be Egyptians were trying to sneak into the country yesterday via Ecuador when they were stopped at the Miami airport. The men had no visas, were taken to a transit lounge, but they escaped. 13 were caught later, eight others were still missing today. Officials say the men paid a smuggler at least $3,000 each to get here. Near Subaru, I work on an Indian reservation, and road conditions here are just atrocious. I've often taken some potholes a little faster than I should have. Yet I've driven my Subaru over 80,000 miles with less than $25 in engine repairs. Some people don't believe that, but as they say here on the reservation, Siskvuk, Mosma, Mok, Chishon. Of all cars in America, Subaru is second only to Mercedes in customer satisfaction. Which cereal has more vitamin nutrition than any other? Kellogg's Product 19 cereal. But you'd never guess. Oh. Because Product 19 vitamins are flaky, bumpy, crispy, crunchy. And taste so good. Product 19 goodness comes from corn, oats, wheat, and rice. Delicious. Kellogg's Product 19. Flaky. Bumpy. Crispy. Crunchy. Mmm. Tasty vitamins. Hey, Dentrawares, 
If you love your Paul and Green, would you smile? If you love your Paul and Clean, would you smile? If you love it and you know it, hey, just smile and show it. If you love your Paul and Green, would you smile? Super Strength Paul and Green. You'll love the way it powers away tough food stains and keeps your dentures sparkling clean, even in between. If you love your Paul and Clean, would, would you, you smile? smile? Finally tonight, a story about one woman's fight to save a national landmark on New York's Long Island. It's a struggle against time and the elements, but so far, she's winning. Victoria Cordero reports. Georgina Reed is a woman with a mission. This plucky 4'11", 77-year-old is single-handedly battling to keep the Montauk Point Lighthouse standing. I really don't care about me as long as it's there. And I hope it'll be there for several hundred years to come. The lighthouse was built in 1797, and over the years, erosion ate 250 feet off the bluff surrounding it and threatened to swallow up the lighthouse, too. But then Georgina Reed stepped in with a home remedy. She calls it Reed Trench Terracing, a system she created when erosion threatened her own home. She digs out little terraces, fills them with hollow reeds, and covers them with sand. You have to have a, a way to hold the, the soil down in positions like this, and only grass will do it. Roots, deep roots, shrubs, deep, anything deep and grabby that grabs the soil will hold it. Eventually, grass grows over the terraces and prevents the rain from washing away the soil. It's not aesthetic. It looks like hell, but it does the job. Georgina volunteered her services to the federal government 16 years ago. She spent $40,000 of her own money and countless hours of her own time on these bluffs. I love it madly. Why would I be here if I wasn't? When I turn around and see the ocean, there, you know, I get my reward. It's wild. It's wonderful. The method to what some might call Georgina's madness is working. The Coast Guard says erosion has stopped. On this little piece of the world, Georgina Reed is fortifying against time. Victoria Corderi, CBS News, Montauk, Long Island. And that's the news. I'm Bob Schieffer, CBS News, New York. Good night. We're NCI. To score points with you, we must choose our communications weapons carefully. That's why we compete with products like PRISM the ultimate concept in Watts. For maximum flexibility as your monthly call patterns change. We know our competition's good. We know we have to be better. And because we compete, you win. MCI. Communications for the next hundred years. When you need it most, you can get extra strength relief from acid indigestion with extra strength Riapan Plus. In lab tests, it neutralizes twice the acid as regular Maalox or Mylanta. It's that strong. <sighs> you can also get extra strength relief from heartburn with extra strength Riapan Plus. Ounce for ounce, it neutralizes twice the acid as regular Maalox or Mylanta. It's that strong. <sighs> extra strength Riapan Plus. Regular strength, too. The treacherous Glen Abbey course is the setting for Canada's national championship, the 77th Canadian Open, tomorrow on CBS Sports. This is CBS. Jim Navar has the experience to know what you're looking for. Selection, price, high trade-in value, and service. At both Navar Ford locations, you can expect great selection from the new Ford Taurus to tough Ford trucks. Jim Navar has what you're looking for. Two locations mean a high volume and absolutely the best possible price. You can trust 40 years of automotive experience. Thousands of customers have seen the Navar Ford difference. See it yourself at Navar Motor Sales Barrington and Navar Ford Lincoln Mercury Elma. It's time for the National Cherry Festival, and it's time for Max's annual pre-cherry festival extravaganza. 
At Max's, we love the Cherry Festival, but due to all the festivities, we lose a week's worth of business. So from now until Cherry Festival week, all those great GE refrigerators and ranges, washers and dryers, dishwashers and microwaves will be reduced for this special event. Free Cherry Festival savings from Max's and GE, and you'll get a free cherry pie with every major purchase. Max's annual pre-Cherry Festival extravaganza, downtown Traverse City.